Let's say goodbye with a smile. So we have a hostile coming in. Hello, Tangmere. Hello, Tangmere. Uh, can we bring Squadron 43 to readiness, please? Dispersal. Hostile 07 is now moved to R. Roger 4040. Hello, Tangmere. Hello, Tangmere. Can you scramble Squadron 43? Scramble Squadron 43. <laughs> years ago, Tangmir as an airfield became operational at the end of the First World War. That same year, the RAF was founded. So we're here we are on the 27th of July 2008, celebrating this unique anniversary of these two events. People like coming here, and I'm sure you will as well, because we are all volunteers, and that makes a very different museum. All the people are here because of what this museum stands for, and it's important to us all that we get this history and this heritage going forward into, for future generations. I'm standing right here alongside one of the absolute pieces of history, is Neville Duke's famous Red Hunter, we're just off the coast here. He achieved a world airspeed record at 753 miles an hour. This museum was started back in the early 1980s, originally as a private enterprise, but a little later in 1987, December in fact, it became a fully registered charity and has operated as a charity since those days. There is no funding from anywhere except for what people come to pay to come and see us and a few grants to achieve various things like such as this hall we're standing in now. Well we've been, I've been invited very kindly with my wife um, to come and uh, take part in the RAF Tangmere Open Day and having been here last year and been very very impressed with all the marvellous exhibits and the huge amount of hard work that the volunteers put in was one of the events we certainly could not miss today and we're very proud, proud and very pleased to be here. here today as uh, president of the Tangmere Museum. I inherited this privilege from Neville Duke who died not so long ago. This is a very historic site. I mean it goes back well before the war as a fighter station. Well-known squadrons were based here and in the Battle of Britain of course it played a very leading part in, in the battle not only with the fighter aircraft but with the Lysanders who were going back and forth across to France picking up agents and doing a marvellous job and these, these um, activities are all commemorated in the museum.
um, instead of being called up into the forces, I was sent to Farnborough to um, carry on research work on um, air photography, photo reconnaissance and uh, photo interpretation. As civilians we weren't allowed to fly on operations, which was um, a bit frustrating because when you developed a special piece of equipment and you knew more about it than anyone else, we then had to hand it over to the RAF at Benson, we weren't allowed to do the sortie ourselves. Well, I'm here with the band, Played Again Sam, who are playing for this, this event today. It's fantastic. It's a lovely, lovely museum. Tangmere Aviation Museum. Yeah, it's really nice. The sun's shining. Couldn't be better. We're Ops 39-45, which is a living history RAF um, group representing the RAF during World War II. We, we're regulars at Duxford. We run a little group called Deco in Style, which is a, a small reenactment group and we cover World War II uh, right back to as far as about 1910. Many years ago, over 50 years ago, I was associated as an engineer only uh, with the world speed record flown by Neville Duke. At that time I worked at um, Dunsfold Airfield as an airframe and engine mechanic, or engineers are called us in the experimental department. And uh, we got the airplane ready for the tank for Tangmere, and a uh, great day came, we all came down here, and uh, we broke the world speed record. Oh, we knew we were going to do it, the attempt, yes. We had an attempt a bit before that, and we had a problem with the landing gear, and the um, airplane went back to Dunsfold. Well, Neville took it back to Dunsfold. I don't know how he, how he managed to fly it, because at about 700 miles an hour, one of, the, one of the landing gears came out, and he whipped him over on his back. But he managed to get control and he got it back to Dunsfold. He landed it at Dunsfold on, uh, with one main leg down, one nose wheel down, one not there. And uh, in a week they rebuilt the whole thing up together and back it came. Well, I spent a large number of years in the Royal Air Force. Um, and after doing my early days of training and then operational flying, I went to the Empire Test Pilot School. 1961 and I spent the rest of my 32 years in the air RAF test flying or in the game of procurement so I'm very lucky I served at both Bedford, Farnborough and Boscombe Down. You know there were just so many lovely lovely aeroplanes I suppose one would find it very difficult to put anything ahead of the Harrier because I was involved, lucky enough to be involved in that literally from its earliest days the first prototype up to the Mark III Harrier and I was involved in the first clearance to operate the Harrier from the old HMS Ark Royal. Um, but then as a basically single seat fighter pilot most of my life, um, one couldn't begin to beat the joy of flying the Vulcan, which we were given for an experimental program. I just couldn't believe that um, there were four of us, four test pilots at Bedford, and for the job we were involved in, they reckoned the Vulcan was the best thing for the trials we were doing. So um, to be given the chance to fly that aeroplane as captain and everything it was just unbelievable 